Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give thanks for your spirit, which continues to move in and among us. Speak through me, O God, that my words may be yours, and speak to each of us that we may hear your message for us this day. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Well, I have to admit that it is a little bit hard for me to be here today. Our family left on May 22nd for Paris, where we, and then we joined 36 others from Arizona for a Wesley Heritage tour, and then we stayed in London for an extra week, and then back home for 40 hours before we went to Mesa for annual conference. We've been home 16 hours since annual conference before I drove here this morning. I'm just a little bit tired. The biggest part of my jet lag, thank goodness, was taken care of by annual conference, but now I have stacks of mail waiting for me at home and here. I have laundry to do, I have grocery shopping, we completely emptied our freezer and our refrigerator before we left. I have six weeks ahead of me where the children have nothing to do. (laughs) And to top it all off, the window installers are coming on Tuesday to install the rest of our windows, so we get to move our bookcases and the china hutch because they need to get to the windows to do their work. I don't really want to go back on vacation. I do like my bed, and I'm tired of eating out, but I wouldn't mind another month of staycation just to catch up with everything. But here we are. Here we are on Father's Day. Here we are on the last Sunday of worship for Sanctuary United Methodist Church. We'll have a big worship celebration next week, by the way, with their praise team and our organ, with the summer choir and praise songs and hymns and two preachers and who even knows what else. On this day, it seems appropriate to talk about the father of Methodism, John Wesley, and it seems appropriate to be reminded of our heritage as Methodists who follow Jesus in the footsteps of the Wesleys. And besides, I have to show you my England photos. On the Wesley Heritage Tour, we were scheduled to visit St. Paul's Cathedral on Tuesday. As we were waiting that morning for the bus and our tour host to arrive, someone happened to look online and discovered that St. Paul's Cathedral was closed because they were filming something. The Warner Brothers um, trailers were out there. It was closed. We didn't get to take a tour. But later in the week, some of us who stayed in London for a few extra days chose to attend um, worship at the cathedral Thursday night. Our family started the day on Thursday at the cathedral. We walked around the cathedral. We didn't go in. We walked around it. We had to see the the statue of John Wesley. We stopped to smell the roses and appreciate the architecture. And, of course, we sat on the steps. Did you know that St. Paul's Cathedral in London is where they filmed Feed the Birds? Tuppence a bag, tuppence, from Mary Poppins. So that is my daughter, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but that is actually a bird flying away from her as she stood there (laughs) on the steps of St. Paul's Cathedral. I love that picture. I arrived back at St. Paul's Cathedral in the evening to join the others for the service of communion, and it was a fabulous service. The ushers were very clear that this was a worship service, not a tour, and no photos were allowed. I didn't listen very well, and I sneaked a couple of photos. (laughs) I had to prove that I was there. So this is Pastor Sharon, and Brenda's back as we worshiped. I wanted proof. Do you see the the organist right on Sharon's left shoulder? Um, Right there, tiny, is the organist. And then the choir sat just to the left of the organist. There were about 20 people, similar to our size choir, and they uh, sat there. Later on Saturday, I went back for another service of Evensong Thursday night, and they actually sat in that long space 
and faced each other instead of us. This was much more fabulous. The table is right in front. Between the two ladies is the table um, where communion was, was set up. The choir was there, the organist was there, and we were sitting under the dome. I took this picture with the camera sitting on my lap, looking up. <laughs> we sat there under the dome, under that. You, you can't see the picture, it doesn't do it justice, but with light streaming in, with all of the beauty of that. Since 1697, people have worshiped under that dome, in that space. That's 327 years, 26, 326 years of worship services, Sunday worship, morning prayer, even song, Christmas Eve services, weddings and funerals and thanksgivings, 326 years of people sitting right under that dome, right there where I was worshiping God. It was pretty humbling. I was there in that space where Margaret Thatcher's funeral was held. I was there where Charles and Diana were married where they held diamond and silver and platinum jubilee services for Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth, where Armistice Day was celebrated with the service of Thanksgiving. I was there where John Wesley worshipped. On May 24, 1738, John Wesley visited St. Paul's in the morning. He noted in his journal that the choral anthem of the day moved him. At that time, he felt lost, and he desired the assurance of faith. Samuel Wesley, John's father, had died in 1735, just three years prior, and that marked a change in John. He left Oxford. He went to Georgia, where he failed in his missionary efforts. It was in the trip both there and back on the boat with Moravians that he realized he lacked the assurance of faith that they knew. He might have been an Anglican priest, but something was missing. John Wesley came to St. Paul's that May morning wrestling. Something was stirring within him, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. We call that prevenient grace. The movement of the Spirit before the event of salvation. Prevenient grace is God's Spirit moving within us before we ever know it. It's the stirring within us, the nudging and the love before we are aware of it. On that morning, John Wesley felt stirrings within him. Something was going on, but he couldn't quite name it yet. Earlier that day, on Thursday, before even before our worship service, when our family finished visiting the fabulous restrooms in the basement of the cathedral, we moved down the road, up the road actually, walking the same path that John Wesley likely walked that day in May. After he left worship at St. Paul's, he went to Aldersgate Street. We discovered there on the wall, on the the fence there, a plaque marking what many of us know as Wesley's Aldergate mom Aldersgate moment. That same day, May 24th, 1738, Wesley went to a small group Bible study at a church there at Aldersgate Street. There's a Presbyterian church right next door now. While they were reading Augustine's preface to the book of Romans, Wesley experienced what we call justifying grace. He came to know the assurance of faith that he was yearning for. The stirrings that he felt earlier in worship moved to an experience of assurance. It was that moment when he felt his heart strangely warmed, when he knew that he knew that he knew that he was saved and loved by God. Justifying grace is that assurance that we are claimed and beloved by God. It's that moment our lives are justified, made right with God. It's that knowledge that we are God's child and nothing we can do will remove that. Wesley's experience of justifying grace of his heart strangely warm changed him for the better, energizing and equipping him for, for a vibrant ministry to come. Just up the road from Aldersgate Street is what is known as Wesley's Chapel. Our tour group visited that on Tuesday with 
thanks to Carol Fouch for your photo of outside of the chapel. Apparently, I didn't think it was important to take a photo. Just a year after Wesley's Aldersgate moment, they purchased and renovated the foundry in 1739. The foundry hosted society meetings and class meetings, but it also provided housing for some. It included a medical dispensary, a, a clinic, a medical clinic, a school, and more. In 1738, a chapel was built and became the center of Methodism, replacing the foundry just up the road. Wesley's chapel that you see here became the place of worship, of meeting, of ministry. It was the center of the Methodist movement and where John Wesley lived. Aren't those beautiful stained glass windows? John Wesley and the Methodists knew and lived what he called holiness of heart and life. It was the assurance of faith that led them to know that God's to know God's love which led them to love their neighbors. Their assurance of faith led them to know God's love and led them to love their neighbors. This is the work of sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace is where God works in us to help us live and love like Jesus, responding to the needs around us. Sanctifying grace, it's the work of God within us to move us on to perfection, John Wesley would say later, to live and to love like Jesus, to become more like Christ each and every day. John Wesley's foundation for the people of called Methodists includes these three understandings of grace, the three ways that we understand God to be moving in and around us. It's essential to who we are as Methodists even today. Prevenient grace, the movement of the Spirit in and around us before we know it. Justifying grace, that assurance that we are loved by God. Sanctifying grace, the Spirit moving us to live and to love like Jesus. All of this is rooted in scripture and in experience. It comes from Wesley's understanding of Jesus and how God loves us and asks us to love others. It's a gift it is grace from God to God's people. Our heritage as Methodists is that we follow in the footsteps of Jesus in the company of the Wesleys. John and Charles Wesley's were Anglican priests who knew the rituals and the closed churches had, had fallen away from what Jesus commanded in Luke. In Luke, Jesus says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. John and Charles Wesley knew that it wasn't enough to simply go to church and live a good life. We had to love others, to make a difference in the world, to love God. They led the early Methodists to love God and to love neighbor, to practice social and personal holiness. Our heritage as Methodists is that we do the same. We don't worship the Wesleys. They were flawed and human, just like you and I are. But we join the Wesleys in believing that together we can live and love like Jesus. Together we can alleviate suffering in our world. Together we can share Jesus with our neighbors. Together we can help others to a better life. Together we can change the world. Friends, I wonder how the Spirit is working in you today. Do you know the assurance of God's love? Not for your neighbor, not for somebody else, but for you. God loves you just as you are. Flaws and everything, God loves you. Do you know that assurance? Do you know the unearned, unending, unrelenting love of God for you? Is the Spirit nudging you to take a bold step in faith? Is the Spirit working in you on that sanctifying grace, asking you to live and love for Jesus a little bit more, to volunteer in a new way to change the world, to begin a small group to focus on matters of faith, to teach the children or youth who Jesus is and why Jesus matters, to visit in prisons or hospitals, to volunteer in our school? As Methodists, we join John and Charles Wesley knowing that God is a God who continues to move in this world. May we follow on the path of Christ in the company of the Wesleys. Amen and amen. Let us pray. 
God of us all, your love never ends. We give thanks that you are with us, that you move among us, justifying, sanctifying. You move among us before we ever know it. God of us all, thank you for your love that never ends. We pray that you would help us to know how you are calling us to live out our faith. Show us, O oh God, your love, your way, how we might be your people. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. On this Father's Day, we have much to give thanks for. We have fathers who were there or who weren't there, fathers that we appreciate and remember. On this Father's Day, I invite you to join with me in prayer. Lord, on this day set aside to honor and remember fathers, we give you thanks for our fathers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hands and gave it to us. Thank you for the sacrifices they made. We thank you for the men who raised us, held us, fed us, and cared for us. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our dads. We pray for dads whose children are grown. Grant them joy and satisfaction for a job well done. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of their fathers. Grant them comfort in moments of grief. We pray, pray for dads whose children have died. Grant them strength and healing. We pray for dads who feel like they're hanging on by their fingernails. Grant them confidence and endurance. We pray for dads who are raising their children in poverty. Grant them relief and justice. We pray for dads who are separated from their children. Grant them faith and hope. We pray for dads in marriages that are in crisis. Grant them support and insight. We pray for dads who have been unable to love. Grant them forgiveness and guidance. We pray for dads who had their children adopted by others. Grant them confidence as they trust in your providence. We pray for foster and adoptive fathers. Grant them joy and gratitude for the gift you have provided. We pray for dads who face the demands of single parenthood. Grant them wisdom and strength. We pray for stepdads. Give them patience and connection. We pray for dads whose children have special needs. Grant them clarity of purpose. We pray for boys and men who dream of becoming dads. Grant them wisdom and discernment. We pray for men who had wanted to be dads. Grant them courage to embrace the calling you have for them. We pray for men who will soon be dads. Grant them patience and good counsel in the coming months. We pray for new dads experiencing changes they could not predict. Grant them rest and peace as they trust you for their future. We pray for all of those who have assumed the father's role in a child's life. Grant them joy and appreciation. Lord, we thank you for the gift of fatherhood. May these dads and men gathered here today emulate the faith of your saints and model for us, for the rest of us, what it means to be your disciples. Bless them on this special day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.